end of COVID pandemic is in sight. Germany urges Putin to withdraw from Ukraine ASAP. U.S. presses Germany to deliver tanks. Putin and Xi to discuss Ukraine and Taiwan. Iconic French New Wave director Jean-Luc Godard dies. EU intelligence chief cancels Taiwan trip. Canada announces $4.5 billion inflation relief package. Mountain Glacier in Chile's Patagonia collapses. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Thursday, September 15th, and here are your top stories. On Wednesday, September 14th, the head of the World Health Organization said the world has never been in a better position to end the COVID-19 pandemic. This has been his most optimistic outlook yet on the years-long health crisis, which has killed over 6 million people. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said we are not there yet, but the end is in sight. However, he again urged nations to maintain their vigilance and linked the pandemic to a marathon race. The director general said, now is the time to run harder and make sure we cross the line and reap the rewards of all our hard work. Countries need to take a hard look at their policies and strengthen them for COVID-19 and future viruses. Tedros also urged nations to vaccinate 100% of their high-risk groups and keep testing for the virus. Dr. Michael Head, Senior Research Fellow in Global Health at Southampton University said, It is probably fair to say most of the world is moving beyond the emergency phase of the pandemic response. According to a German government readout, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz urged Russian President Vladimir Putin to completely withdraw his troops from Ukraine during a call Tuesday, September 13th. The readout noted that given the seriousness of the military situation and the consequences of the war in Ukraine, the chancellor urged the Russian president to find a diplomatic solution as soon as possible, based on a ceasefire, a complete withdrawal of Russian troops, and respect for the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. The readout said the chancellor stressed that any further Russian annexation moves would not go unanswered and would not be recognized under any circumstances. Scholz also appealed to the Russian leader to treat prisoners of war according to the Geneva Conventions on Humanitarian Standards. Ukraine's recent swift battlefield advances have led to fresh calls on Germany and other Western allies to send more weapons, particularly tanks, to bolster Kyiv's efforts. The U.S. Embassy to Germany in a rare direct tweet on Tuesday suggested that Berlin should not have to wait for its allies when it comes to weapon deliveries to Ukraine and could decide on its own. The U.S. Embassy said, We call upon all allies and partners to support Ukraine in its fight for its democratic sovereignty as much as possible. The chair of the German Parliament's Defense Committee, Mary Agnes Strack Zimmerman, used the embassy's tweet to make a fresh appeal to Schultz to ramp up weapons supplies. The media reported that Scholz is expected to face fresh pressure from both the FDP and the Greens during a cabinet meeting on Wednesday, September 14th. Germany's main opposition party, the center-right Christian Democratic Union, is also piling pressure on the government to do more, announcing on Tuesday that it will submit a parliamentary motion next week urging Scholz to step up arms deliveries. Germany is the world's fifth largest arms exporter, producing the renowned Leopard battle tank. Reuters reported that Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping will discuss Ukraine and Taiwan at a meeting in Uzbekistan on Thursday, September 15th. A Kremlin aide said at a briefing in Moscow that the presidents will discuss both the bilateral agenda and the main regional and international topics. While China is Russia's top buyer of crude oil, the aide said that no new energy deals with China are expected to be signed in Uzbekistan. Reuters said the meeting between Xi and Putin in Uzbekistan will take place on the sidelines of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in the ancient Silk Road city of Sarmakan in Uzbekistan. According to the Kremlin, trade turnover between the countries rose to $140 billion in 2021, while for the first seven months of this year, it totaled almost $93 billion. China is Russia's largest buyer of oil. Russia is also striving to boost its gas sales to China and build new pipelines to the country.
Jean Le Godard, the iconic infant turtle of the French New Wave, who revolutionized popular cinema in 1960 with his first feature, Breathless, and stood for years among the film world's most influential directors, died Tuesday. He was 91. Over a long career that began in the 1950s as a film critic, Godard was perhaps the most boundary-breaking director among New Wave filmmakers who rewrote the rules for camera, sound, and narrative rebelling against an earlier tradition of more formulaic storytelling. Born into a wealthy French-Swiss family on December 3, 1930 in Paris, Godard grew up in Nyon, Switzerland, and studied ethnology at the Sorbonne, where he was increasingly drawn to the cultural scene that flourished in the Latin Quarter Cine Club after World War II. Some of cinema's greatest directors counted Godard's boundary-breaking work as an influence, including Quentin Tarantino and Bernardo Bertolucci. French President Emmanuel Macron paid tribute, saying, We have lost a national treasure, the eye of a genius. The political journal cited two diplomats with knowledge of the situation as saying that the European Union's director of the European Union Intelligence and Situation Center, Jose Casimiro Morgado, canceled a trip to Taiwan after his top-secret preparations were seemingly leaked to Beijing in advance. The diplomats said the spy chief was supposed to make the below-the-radar visit to meet Taiwanese officials in October. However, the plan came to a halt after Beijing got hold of the information and put pressure on the EU. The Politico reported the development calls into question whether a human or data leak from the EU was involved. The revelation also sheds further light on the quiet diplomacy between the EU and Taiwan. The EU Intelligence and Situation Center known in the Brussels bubble as INSEN, focuses on civilian intelligence-based situational awareness and forms one of two pillars on the EU's single intelligence analysis capacity alongside the military-focused intelligence directorate of the EU military staff. Canada announced $4.5 billion Canadian dollars in measures intended to provide relief from high inflation to low-income families. The measures include doubling a quarterly tax credit sent to individuals and families with low and modest incomes to offset sales tax, and a $500 Canadian dollars one-time top-up to a housing benefit that is provided to low earners who need help with rent. The Liberal government will also provide up to $650 Canadian dollars per year for dental care to children under 12 who do not have access to dental insurance. The media said that the payment to low-income renters and children's dental care plan are a part of an agreement Trudeau made with the opposition New Democrats Party in March in exchange for its support to keep his minority government in power until 2025. The setting up of a national dental care system was one of the keystones of the agreement, and Trudeau said his government was planning to expand dental benefits to more people by the end of next year with the full program completed by 2025. Reuters reported that higher temperatures and rainfall that weaken ice walls caused part of a hanging glacier to break off at a national park in Chile's Patagonia region in an event captured on video by tourists. Climate scientist Raul Cordero at the University of San Diego said one of the consequences of global warming is that it is destabilizing several glaciers and in particular some unstable glacier walls. That is the case of what happened in Patagonia and a couple of months ago in both the Himalayas and the Alps. In a video that went viral on Monday, September 12th, a glacier that sits atop a mountain about 200 meters high rumbled and broke off at Keolat National Park, located more than 1,200 kilometers south of Chile's capital, Santiago. Cordero noted that the frequency of these events is troubling. Cordero also said, this type of event is triggered by heat waves or by intense liquid precipitation events. And both things are also happening more and more frequently throughout the planet, not only in Chile. Funday News will help sharpen your English skills while keeping you informed on current international events. Tune into other Funday programs to learn more about the world's most important topics in English. Click the link below now to join Fun Day for free. I'm Johnny, your host. I will see you next time.